Okay, next, we're gonna hear from, oh, we'll give special thanks to all those people. They were awesome. Next, we're gonna hear from Cody Spenlove from the Alpine School District. So we're gonna turn it over to our USET Leader of the Year. They need another round of applause. They rocked that, that was awesome. If you've never tried to do this, this is like taking 100 grapes and trying to squeeze it down to exactly one thimble full of juice. They said, pick something that keeps you up at night. This keeps me up at night, okay? Um, but before I start that, I just want to give you a little bit of credit to some of the people that have influenced my thinking. Um, Brett Allred from Nuvi, Rachel Thompson is one of the most amazing people I work with, and some of these books is where I got some of these ideas for today. Um, particularly, we're going to talk about the art of learning and Zen and the odor, uh, motorcycle maintenance. Anybody read either of those? Awesome books. So in my position, I get to listen to a lot of people debate. Um, and we wind up fighting about whether or not standards-based or measurement education is better than project learning. And I'm here in the next two minutes to convince you that this is a needless argument. There's no point in arguing this. Um, some really famous people have weighed in on this lately. And even though I really like George, I hate this graphic because he displays it as though learning doesn't happen in schools or vice versa. And I want to convince you these are the same thing, okay? So, um, we have 150 years worth of research that tells us we know how people learn. I'm going to condense that down using Hattie, Fay, and Fry's, where they basically simplify the model into just three layers. And what you need to know about those three layers is that it starts with surface learning. They say you have to have a surface level knowledge of anything before you can move up into deeper learning and then into what they call transfer into other areas or new ideas. And while this is true, it's also the basis for the mental trap because as teachers we start to think they have to know the whole bottom before they can move up. And the picture I use, this is a Europa, and they have a frozen surface on this planet, and the water jets through every once in a while in the cracks, and it makes these rainbows. This is basically what Hattie is talking about when he says you can take one topic, go really deep, and get this amazing amount of creativity. And I have three examples of that to try and convince you. Two of them come from the art of learning. This is Josh Waitzkin. He's both a world champion martial artist and a world champion chess player. And it turns out he used the same technique to do both. When he started playing chess, they would wipe the board, and they would start with three pieces. And he would play endlessly until he mastered that. Then he would move to four pieces, do it over, then five, which is reversed in the way most people learn chess, where they try to memorize millions of things. He did the same thing in the martial arts, because he realized that everybody else had more practice than he would ever have. He used just five moves that he learned perfectly to take the world title. Six years on six moves. So this idea is also illustrated in Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. Some of you remember this old book, but the hero in this book is given his students this idea that they need to not know everything about the whole world to write. He wants them to write just about their small hometown. So he narrows the focus. But one of the students hates this and really challenges him and says, that's too small. I want to move. I want to move to a different town. I want to talk about Paris. I want to... And that's a temptation as a teacher to let him do that. He says, no, I'm going to narrow the focus. First, he makes her stare out the window at the buildings across the street. When she objects, then he narrows it to the opera house. And when she objects again, he narrows it down to just one brick. One brick. And she has this amazing flourish of creativity by, by turning this into a laser focus. She can push through that surface level knowledge because she is a master of a brick. And she writes 20 inspired pages of creative stuff. That's the master moment. And that's really the point of what I want to talk about. These are not different ideas. You have to have surface level knowledge that we can measure. But a master teacher will stop every once in a while, focus on a brick, and allow those kids to push up into a level of creativity that they couldn't get otherwise. Whether you call this genius hour or 20% time, whatever it goes by, the master teacher realizes that the focus of that is not content. It's what learning feels like. It's that neurological, I'm in the zone. And that's what you're trying to do. Pick a topic the kid already knows and knows well enough and deep enough that they can push into that higher level. You don't do this all the time. You do it just strategically as you're moving along the base of that triangle. And to remind yourself of this, I say you go home and print this, wrap it around the beverage container of your choice, set it on your desk, and when you're teaching from one side, look at it. When you're teaching from the other, turn it around. And if you stare too long at the same side, that should be like a visual reminder to you that as a master teacher, you need to change. Because we're under way too much criticism, as some of my people have pointed out over here, 
And it's our job to educate them what true learning looks like. If you like some of what I said today, you can take a quick Snapchat with your phone. This is where I got all my material from. Thank you very much.